You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. A quietly powerful welcome to all and I'm Carol Ann Hamilton you're listening to the conscious caregiver we're coming to you live from the BBM global network tune in radio iHeart radio Apple podcasting and Spotify and it's so nice to be coming to you from an ever widening set of uh, media shall we say what never changes is that this is the place where you get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical plus emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. To start off with, a question. If my guest and I were to ask if you believe healing can occur even if you are not sitting in the same room as the person providing the service, would you answer yes or no? No matter your response at the outset, I hope your no will have shifted to a yes by the end of this hour and that your yes is more reinforced than ever before. Because I know my own sense of things was a little skeptical when I began my journey into the Reiki world, which is a healing modality that clears energy blockages from the body's energy centers or chakras. And it did start with a first few appointments as a client who had never before experienced quite anything like the gentle calmness that uh, that the woman who became my, my teacher provided to me. And then I progressed to various levels of study with her. Though it's now been over 20 years since a group of her students and I celebrated the granting of my sacred master designation, I still remember my resistance to then embracing my healing gifts. After all, it was one thing to benefit as a client, but quite another to practice and embody the skills and mindsets combined so as to serve others. I frankly doubted myself, pure and simple. And I'm sure our guest listening in likely relates to at least some of that reluctance to embracing our gifts and or the magnitude that we possess as healers. Gosh knows, ancient modalities have been so vilified since at least 325 AD when Roman Emperor Constantine the Great placed upon society certain decrees that have impacted those who practice the arts perhaps even till this day. So no wonder those of us with any talents in those realms have been downright scared to come out of the proverbial closet. For sure, we will hear about Anne's experiences in those regards in just a few moments. And here's what has been my finding over here in Toronto, Canada. While sitting down to craft what I call my behind-the-scenes show map, I ran through my own memory banks, the many coaching clients across the decades who have adamantly insisted that we need to meet in person for any productive insights to occur. And I must say, it's rather of a regret that they were perhaps not more open to alternatives, especially since distance, i.e. not face-to-face, 
interactions can ironically promote more rather than less insight. On the other hand, I do applaud to this day a coaching client from around 2003-2004 who used to drive a good 45 minutes to our house for combined coaching, dialogue, and Reiki. What a fantastic early adopter this woman was, as we used to call it in corporate Canada. And so we'd do a little bit of a preamble when we sat down together and she'd tell me what's going on in her life. Then we'd segue into doing some some Reiki. She would just simply sit in a chair in our living room. Uh, Never did my hands actually touch her body, but I cleared and combed a lot of, let's call it debris, out of her various uh, energy fields and then we would talk about it a little bit afterwards and what she experienced and she was very open and I'm grateful to her to this day since of course technology has advanced significantly never mind the good old-fashioned phone by which I was anticipating a call at this point like literally in my composition from a 75 year old gentleman in Richmond Virginia who likes to think of me as his spiritual coach since 2002 and I now these days cannot count the number of webinars and podcasts that I take in weekly whereby the host or presenter expert call it what you will will incorporate demos of their techniques, guided meditations, and more. And if you do not believe that already a 20-minute YouTube experience can promote healing or illumination, then I would urge you to listen in on one of my favorites, by the way, of Matt Kahn, and you're definitely urged to stay with this broadcast to learn more about profound healing modalities. Now, as is often the case, my guest and I brainstormed several equally worthy themes, and one of those was maintaining a healthy energy body. Hope we might even wind up touching upon the truth that illness begins far sooner in outer energy bodies before it even reaches the physical plane. And as long as we ignore those signs and symptoms, striving to intuitively gain our attention, they will progress until we reach stage four diagnoses, as has happened with more than one of my friends in the past couple of years. Another great topic for us would have been the empathic caregiver. And as recently as an interview this past week on empath well-being, between healer Jennifer McLean, who does a spontaneous transformation technique, and Anita Morjani, who wrote a New York Times bestseller called Dying to Be Me. Um, Anita crossed over during a near-death experience and returned cancer-free from her coma. I felt confirmed in how much those who feel too much would profit from knowing how to set healthy boundaries. Many people who feel their emotions and others' emotions can be what we call too porous, as in we take into our fields that which does not even belong to us, and it can be challenged to dis- you know challenging to distinguish when is it us, when is it the other, and how do we keep ourselves free and clear in our own energy bodies? And after all of that, we arrived at our topic today which is the benefits of distance healing. And we have not actually explicitly titled a show this way in almost 70 broadcasts now, yet you'll soon hear and see and feel how these methods are so significant in helping people to cope with life's challenges. And remember, as caregivers to various audiences, those can include, uh, you know, aging parents and relatives, friends, neighbors, colleagues, even those who are younger that have some perhaps dependency upon you. There's a wide range. Uh, These powers can include the ability to bring ease plus inner peace to even end of life transitions. And when I speak of a, about age groups, I know in my own realm and that of others who listen in regularly that we are listening all we are le- losing all kinds of age groups uh, to end of life transitions. So you can see how much there's to talk about. Stay tuned. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to the Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify.
The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. And we are so glad to have you with us today. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. I was just saying before that we break, we have so much that is exciting and interesting to look forward today. And as we prepare to introduce our treasured guest, here's another great question for you to ponder ponder in the background and it is this to what degree do you believe in and trust the wisdom of your own mind body spirit connection let's let you just think about that one as i share with you the background a little bit of Anne marie Sousa's. and Anne marie has over 30 years experience in the health and wellness field she started her career as an emergency room social worker i can only imagine but then later took time off to raise her children it was in a yoga class when a guest teacher from ireland told her you know you are a healer This teacher intuited a knowing that wasn't even in Anne's consciousness at the time, but it did spark a deep study of yoga, meditation, and energy healing. Almost a decade later, at another chance meeting with a local shaman, Anne was told, you will heal many, in fact, thousands. Dumbfounded, Anne asked, how do you know this? The shaman responded, I know because of the many spirits that walk with you. Anne ended up studying under this shaman for six years. And during that time, she opened her own yoga and wellness center and built her private healing practice. Anne is now a shamanic healing practitioner herself and energy healer, certified as a body talk practitioner, pranic healer, and holy fire Reiki master. Her healing office is in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and Anne also does remote sessions serving clients all over the country. She's uh, her, her yoga and wellness studio is called Sweet Pose. So can you see why we netted to the benefits of distance healing today? So Anne, welcome to the Conscious Caregiver Show, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Oh, thank you, Carol Ann, for having me on the show. I really appreciate being able to share my story and talk about distance healing. Um, it is uh, of my life's uh, work and something I'm very passionate about. 
Yes, I know you are. I know you are. I can hear it, feel it, know it from our conversation. So let's let the listeners hear a little bit more about how you came to be doing, you know, this work in the world and what you've encountered along the way so far. So I think all my life's experience have led me to where I am today. Um, The thing about being a healer, uh, particularly a shamanic healer, is that few people get called to do this work. And even fewer people really listen to that call. Um, I really had to get out of my own way, listen to the messages that I was receiving um, from the universe, listen to the, the nudging in my heart and trusting that this knowing was the path that I should take. Um, so I think I became more aware um, of my path as a healer after intense study of yoga and meditation for almost a decade. Um, in fact, I was a yoga teacher and yoga therapist um, at the time when I got interested in energy healing. And, um, and I started to, uh, when I started to listen to my own heart, things started to fall in place. Opportunities would come my way. I would meet the right people. There was much flow and ease and, um, and abundance. Um, I explored many different types of healing, uh, not just yoga or meditation, also Tai Chi, Qigong, and then um, many, many modalities of energy healing and shamanic healing. I tended to gravitate towards um, working in the energy and spirit realms because that is where I am naturally gifted. I have a natural gift of seeing and feeling um, in the physical and the spirit realm. So when I'm working with some someone, I can actually see where the blockages are in their body, um, whether it be color. Usually it's color. Sometimes I get a little bit of a, of a it's almost like a, a trail, a trailer uh, um, video of what's going on or, or what has happened in their past to cause the pain and um, their discomfort in their uh, current life. So, um, and I'm, you know what, and I'm still learning. I think I'll always be a perpetual student. Um, uh, so um, as, a, as a healer, too, I want to say I did a lot of internal work. Um, you know, in shamanism, they talk about cultivating a hollow bone. So as a shamanic practitioner, you know, you're the conduit for these divine spirit energies to come through. And so there's a certain amount of purification that I needed um, to do in order to help others, you know, to come to their wholeness. I knew I needed to do that uh, for myself. So it meant developing and maintaining a spiritual practice to keep me centered and grounded. So, you know, every day there are practices that I do, um, prayers, meditation, um, physical exercises for my body. Um, self-care is not an option for a healer. It is absolutely a necessity, um, especially when you're servicing others. So eating well, getting enough sleep, um, receiving my own healings. That's really important to, to, you know, get your own healings, um, and setting healthy boundaries. You know, we can't, um, help everybody. Um, we have, uh, you know, I have, my own, my my husband and my family, um, as well, and um, and friends. So, um, it's important to to keep healthy boundaries um, and keep mindful that you know my own energy bucket is full most of the time, and so I'm going to be happy to talk about um, discussing that um, today, uh, particularly with distance healing. Very good, and uh, that's so lovely because I know that we're going to take a short pause, and this is already very illuminating that you share with us some of your own process because I think that listeners benefit from hearing that it's not unusual to come 
to our true purpose over time in this instant success society. So on that note, we'll just pause there. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Stand by all. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. And we are back to the benefits of distance healing today. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are, of course, listening to The Conscious Caregiver, where today we're honored to connect with shamanic healing practitioner and energy healer, Anne Sousas, about the power of alternative modalities via our theme. As I said, the benefits of distance healing. And just before that pause, Anne was putting into context her own journey of how she came to be doing her work in the world. And we have agreed that just before we slide into some attitudes and mindsets to serve you we also want her to describe some challenges that she may have encountered along the way of her own you know journey as a shamanic healer so Anne, could you take us through that before we move on sure sure so i think um some of the challenges that um people experience with distant healing or healing even in general is that the general public doesn't even know what energy healing is you know some do but most really don't and so I guess it's common to make false assumptions about something you don't know about and it's certainly okay to be skeptical I was skeptical in the beginning until I did some research and homework and then I tried it out and found that um, healing was more cathartic um, uh, than um, traditional psychotherapy for me. That was my experience. Um, healing is different than allopathic medicine because healing is about coming to wholeness. You know, traditional medicine is about treating a symptom, um, a particular part of your body. It really focuses on the physical, um, whereas healing you know, you're encompassing the whole body, your physical body, your mental body, your emotions, your belief systems, um, the spirit realm and how that affects you, your energy body. So that's where healing is a little bit different. Um, and for most people, people are looking for a miracle. You know, they want a one-time fix and or a quick fix. And But healing is a process, you know, and it doesn't happen um, instantaneously. Um, you know, healers are not magicians, um, but our bodies are intelligent, um, and they will heal over time. 
So um, it's important to know this. And you, and you notice when you skin your knee or cut your finger that your body's going to heal, even if, even if you don't do anything. But if you do seek out healing, um, you are starting to bring more intention and um, attention to that injury or discomfort or pain or you're channeling divine energies through. So, so that process of healing can be quickened. So those are, are the, the main challenges that, I, that people are, have these ex- expectations that healing is quick um, or they don't really know too much about healing. So I do encourage people to really interview your healers, do your homework. There's so much online that, and on YouTube and everything that you can, you can um, really find much more about it. Mm -hmm. That is so important. And thank you, actually, for sharing what you just did. I do believe that lays a very important groundwork in terms of the distinctions between, say, psychotherapy. Our experiences match up there for sure, right as of my first Reiki session with my teacher, then the allopathic model and what that creates inside of people as contrasted with what healing as, as you defined it, really, really imparts for folks. So that slides us right nicely into attitudes and mindsets then, because you know that we are, have listeners who are variously navigating caregiving journeys. Often they are actually supporting, you know, parents, relatives, others in far distant locations. So I know they're very curious to hear about the benefits of yeah. distance healing yeah. in those regards too. So take it away, Anne. Yeah. So, yeah, distance healing can be wonderful support for caregivers. I think caregivers need it the most. It's important for their own energy buckets to be full so they can be present for another. You know, what distance healing can do, it can shift one's experience of taking care of another. That, that's a draining experience to one that is present and in connection to another. So this caregiving experience would really expand the heart expand the energy. Um, what I what I love about distance healing is it's convenient. You could do it from your own home, your office, from your bedroom, your kitchen. Um, you know, if you have kids or aging parents, um, you know, it can be very convenient. A, a lot of my distant clients have busy lives. You know, they work crazy hours or they have kids at home. And so it's nice to, like, chill out on their own couch while they're, they're having healing. Um, if you're traveling, um, it's wonderful. i uh, got so many calls from people on vacation where they've gotten sick or injured and, you know, calling me up and say, hey, can you, can you help us out here? We're on vacation. So it can be very, um, very convenient in that way. Um, for somebody that is ill and homebound or even in the hospital, I've been called to do a lot of distance healing. And what that does, it speeds up that process so that somebody can return back home quicker um, so that they can heal faster. Or I could even help figure out what is actually going on. Um, and, and I've had so many successful cases where I'm healing people really, uh, you know, in France, in India, um, you know, um, all over the country and you know, all over the United States. Um, especially when they are sick, um, so that their surgeries are successful, that they recuperate without, um, you know, any further um, complications. So um, I also find that distance healing can help when a person cannot talk. Um, if they're a baby or if they have special needs. Um, I've worked on people with comas and... um, uh, that, you know, really amazing experiences working with people with comas um, because, you know, their consciousness, their consciousness is alive. They might not be present. And so being able to work with um, their soul in this in, in several cases. That's so important, so Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, that's just a perfect place to pause for a moment. Important stuff here. We're just going to take a break, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Stand by, everyone. 
Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful happy. And welcome back all. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show, and we're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And we're learning already a great deal that is fascinating today with shamanic healing practitioner and energy healer and Sousa's about the benefits of distance healing. And those are also founded on her certifications as a body talk practitioner, pranic healer, and Holy Fire Reiki Master. By the way, Anne, I had to look up Holy Fire Reiki for myself. I like, whoa, that's interesting. So either way, <laughs> you were you were just uh, starting to talk about um, you know your findings with clients when you work with them from a distance and how yeah. powerful that can be. Uh, and that this can happen from the comfort of their homes globally. In fact, I know you have a testimonial from a client in France that was quite amazing, but I don't want to defray you from, you know, talking about whatever else you wish to share with our caregiving audience about mindsets or maybe strategies that they too can employ to, to navigate what is often a stressful chapter of life. Sure. Um, So um, let's talk about that client in France just for a second, though. Um, I uh, was called by one of uh, my clients here in Pennsylvania, and she said, can you work on my mom? She got got into a really horrible accident where she was hit by a motorcycle while she was vacationing in France, and she had a serious brain injury. Um, She was in a coma. They had to um, remove part of her brain because it was so it was bleeding and 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 um, and so inflamed. Um, and so she was heading over, getting her. My client was heading over um, to France, and I was doing some distance healing, um, knowing exactly. She didn't even have to tell me. I knew exactly where the injury was. Working on cellular healing, getting. Um, her body's immune system boosted up and hydration and and all of that. And she was doing quite well. Even the doctors say, well, wow, this is miraculous. You're, you're progressing really well. But I want to say about, and, and she did come out of her coma um, a few days later. Um, what happened was that her... Um, her sodium levels and potassium levels were off and... You know, we, she was hoping to bring her back to the United States. So I did more healing, and I said, you know what? Nothing with the brain is coming up. It's actually the kidneys. And I feel like she's 
there's some inflammation over there, and maybe that's something. But she had this. I felt she had it even before she went on her vacation. So my client here called her doctor, and in fact, she did, um, you know, was being treated for a urinary tract infection. And so there, that was probably lingering or have may have gotten worse. And so once the doctors in France treated that, then she was able to stabilize. And within two weeks after that, the um, accident, she was on a plane home, um, you know, going into a rehab center. So um, it was so helpful for uh, this caregiver, um, the stress of being away from her own children and to come to a different country where they do medicine a little differently um, than they do in the States and um, having to work with um, that challenge and then bringing home her mom. It was just a wonderful way to support her. So this is one of the ways that um, distance healing can support somebody. Um, mm -hmm. I have many cases like that, many testimonials like that as well. Um, but g getting back to the, the benefits of it, it, it can be also cost effective. You know, healing is faster, so shorter hospital stays, you're back to work or school um, earlier. Um, it can be a great preventative measure uh, with a rising cost of health care. You know, keeping healthy is important, so, um, so you know, distance healing can work for you there. Um, but I do want to mention healing is not a replacement <laughs> to going to a doctor, you know. So if you, you know, if you're bleeding or you're, you know, um, you certainly want to go to a doctor and get <laughs> checked out. Um, it, uh, but it can be very, be very complimentary. And in my opinion, um, from the opinion, actually, from my clients, more helpful. So sometimes they, they reach out to me first and like, yeah, can you check out? And I'll, I might do healing. And I said, you know, after a while, I'll, I'll say, you know, you know, I really think you should get check, check this out. You know, and sometimes I could see that this, this is not in my realm. You know, this might be something that um, another medical doctor or, or even another healer, you know. Um, so sometimes I can see, um, see that as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think yeah. I think that that's important to Anne Marie because, <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> there there can be there can be what I will call charlatans in the field who just think that they can hang out a shingle without doing the inner work and without really studying, um, you know, in depth in these fields, shall we say? And there is not always a replacement for the uh, let's call it the primary care physician. I know that. That I had an appointment last week where I am actually I would be actually one of your clients that says, really, can I just kind of skirt the traditional medical system and just, <laughs> you know, kind of go with you? Because I love the Hippocrates uh, quote, of course, often considered the father of Western medicine, who lived in classical Greece from 370 to 460 BC, around the, until the, about the age of 90. And it's this quotation that you have, our bodies are highly intelligent and sophisticated organisms. They have the ability to balance and heal themselves by natural means if we allow them the opportunity to be heard. And, you know, I, I just feel like your listening, your intuition, your access through your channel really helps people to come to their own wisdom. And that is why, and the appointment with that GP did not go so well. Let's just put it like that. And we were talking <laughs> around the time that that was occurring. And I said, oh my gosh, I wonder what Anne is thinking right now or feeling in my own field later on that same day that I had been at the uh, primary care uh, person. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I know the power of this. And that's why when we uh, have you continue to share your insights with us. I will want you to also address what you've learned about yourself along the way. And we want to make sure to get out your additional words of wisdom. So there's that coming up, as well as the fact that I want people to know where they will be able to find out more about you. So I'm just getting everybody queued up to make sure that we encompass those topics too. 
by the way, your quote by the poet A.D. Posey about being the energy you want others to absorb struck me Mm -hmm. as so very true and so very important. And that's what you're bringing us today, And So just stand by, everyone. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show, and we're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. And we are back to the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, together today with fascinating guest, shamanic healing practitioner and energy healer, Anne Seuss. And this is always the time where it starts to go really fast during the hour. So, <laughs> Anne, I know that you want to get at some important f- Uh, remaining advice and insights for folks. So please pick up right where you left off. Sure. Um, You made a a very important point um, that there are charlatans out there um, that are just hanging a shingle. You know, healing, when you are a healer, it is not just training. Um, There's a process that you have to go through. Um, And so you really do want to interview your healer. You want to know how she's trained. You want to know what they're doing and, um, and how they, they keep up with their, um, training. Um, you want to get recommendations. So, um, so that is really important. Um, and the process, I mean, I've been healing now for, gosh, I want to say, um, eight years of my healing practice, um, Previous to that, I was healing. I just not a healing in the way that I do it now. Um, energy healing, distance healing, shamanic healing. Um, so I learned quite a lot about myself in this um, in this process. So, so I'd like to share a little bit about that. Um, you know, um, so some things uh, about um, about this process for me is, um, you know, is always to ask for help. You know, if you're feeling stuck, ask for help. Um, there are a lot of people out there that uh, wanted to help, so I really needed to um, to get over myself and ask for the help that I needed. Um, you know, at the, the end of the day, um, I do this as a daily practice. Um, I ask what went well, what didn't go so well, and how I could handle you know, that situation better. 
And it, it brings awareness to the things that um, I do over and over and over again. And so it helps me make a, a different choice. So that's something that, you know, I could bring to a listener is to do a daily review at the end of the day. You know, what went well, what didn't go well, and, you know, how can you make a different choice? Um, being being very grateful for everything that comes your way, especially the difficult, painful moments, because those are the ones that are going to be the most transforming. You know, allow yourself to feel your feelings and don't push them away. And, um, again, we, 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 we are wonderful healers. Our bodies know how to heal intelligently. So you can, you know, get over a lot of the pain and injury um, just by allowing yourself to feel those feelings that you're feeling and asking for help. Um, I think the, the biggest lesson that I've learned in my healing practice was to get out of my own way. <laughs> I think sometimes we are harder on ourselves. We have certain expectations that are real unrealistic, you know, or we might have certain expectations of others that might be unrealistic. So this will definitely cause conflict for sure. So it's about developing um, patience and compassion for yourself and to, and for others and to be present. You know, after all, we are all imperfect human beings. So those are some of the um, lessons that I learned in, in healing um, as, and that I share, obviously, with my uh, clients. And Marie, and Marie, that is so beautiful. Like if we had just a snippet that we were going to, I don't know, put out on YouTube or some something like that, apart from the full archive that will be available in a few days' time, I think that last set that you've learned from yourself – that you have shared with us has been very, very impactful. So thank you. And you have been a wealth of wisdom today. So the proverbial question before I start to thank you is where can we find out more about you? Okay. Well, um, my website is sweetposed.com. So it's S-W-E-E-T-P-O-S-E.com. Um my uh, people can reach me by email at Ann, that's with an E, A N N E, at sweetpost.com. Um, uh, my uh, business line is 484 889 6926, and you can text me there as well. So that's 484 889 6926. For distance healing, I'm available over the phone, through FaceTime, Skype, Zoom. If you happen to be in the state of Pennsylvania, I'm only 30 minutes outside of the Philadelphia area. So um, give me a call. I'd love to see you in person as well. That's great. I so appreciate you actually repeating those particulars. And I do urge folks to check out sweetpose.com, for for example, because that's a, a gateway into, you know, finding out more about you. And I thoroughly enjoyed uh, looking up everything that you that you offer. And that does bring me to what I want to say in gratitude with you, Anne, because as much as we have been focusing on the benefits of distance healing today, part of me would actually love to live around the corner from your sweet pose (laughs) yoga and wellness studio. Ironically, like we're talking about distance and then, you know, I'm saying, oh, I would love to see you in person, right? Uh, Even though I know the benefits and the power of meeting by all of the technologies that you just described. And I cannot tell you how helpful it has been to be accompanied also in the background of our preparations, because your energy has been so, for me, calming and wise and kind. And it was on the heels of a second intense week related to caregiving my husband via, you know, multiple medical appointments. And although he's still learning by osmosis from me about the benefits of Reiki. Okay, 
uh, the guest who <laughs> recommended you would laugh if she was listening in on this part. At least he understands the benefits of Reiki for our cat. Can you even believe that, Anne? But it's true. Uh, <laughs> so he's still learning it as a human being. But um, uncharacteristically, through all of that, I was late to our final check-in call. And if anything, I was rhetorically wondering what you were sensing about me intuitively on the heels of my own upsetting GP appointment, as I said. But either way, you were unfailingly gracious and I thank you for that, because without a doubt, Aww. you do make an equally powerful but quiet impact with your grateful clients. Now, I'm not done with the thanks. Stand by, Anne. Just we'll take a pause. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Wait for the rest. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. And welcome back to our last few always fast moments together, folks. You know how this one runs. It goes quickly. So we're on the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show, and I'm just in the middle of my very important thank you to Anne Seuss, owner of the Sweet Pose Yoga and Wellness Studio, uh, just outside of Pennsylvania, I, uh, out Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. And I, I love the United States, and I'm one of those Canadians who loves Americans. And I've been in Philadelphia more than once. So, you know, next time I would come, might just be looking you up in person, but we're talking today about the benefits of distance healing. And so I wanted to continue my gratitude. And that is to say thank you for being so unfailingly gracious with me also behind the scenes, because I know that you make an equally quiet but powerful impact with your clients. I can just tell that from our interactions. And really, the guest who recommended you said, you will love Anne. And that has most certainly proven true. I hope folks will look you up and learn more about the remote sessions that you make available to serve people all over the country. We talked about your experience there helping the client return from France with her mom. So there you were in you know, Pennsylvania and helping out in France. And so I'm sure that your services encompass Canadians like me. So thank you for bringing your important energy to the planet and seriously at a time oh. when we need it more than ever before. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. 
So with that said, everyone, you know you tune in faithfully weekly, many of you do, and I promised a little leader update from last week where my theme was being a caregiving leader. And I said, how, how did I make out according to my own criteria? And Anne was suggesting, look at daily what you did well, what you did not do well. Okay, I tried to do really well the action of engaging with the GP. And I, I applaud myself for that. But I didn't do completely well in my patients' levels with that. One uh, specialist that was dealing with my husband, where the receptionist kind of goofed up on the appointment time frame, and so he had to return to the local hospital up the street twice in one day because there was that miscommunication with the timing. That is not an aplomb that I would prefer as a caregiving leader. But anyway, despite it being a mixed bag, I'm hoping next week's guest who owns an in-home support service will help me even better to interact with the healthcare system. And please keep tracking as you do my latest blog series on Carol Ann's top 10 caregiver peeves. You can find those at copingwithuncopableparents.com. I'm always available for a free confidential readiness session where you can also email me at carolann at carolannhamilton.com if you like. Archives for this show and all the others are always available at boldbravemedia.com forward slash shows forward slash the hyphen conscious hyphen caregiver under self-help or health. So I hope you have truly benefited from learning more about distance healing today because as I said at the outset, this is not a topic that we have dealt with explicitly in this fashion. And so I'll leave you to consider whether you're, no, you didn't believe that that's powerful, has changed, or whether your yes is reinforced. And on that note, you know what I say. You've been strong too long. How about you dare to care with flair? We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. Can't wait for next week. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.